the paper I will present is based on a project I've been recently investigating, so it's more of a work in progress than uh, a finished research. So if we can go to the next slide, I'll just start. The magazine project was the big lie of Documenta 12. With these words, Dario Corbeira and Irene Montero, editors of the Spanish art periodical Brumaria, defined the magazine project, launched by Documenta 12 in 2006, almost a year and a half before the opening of the quinquennial show in Kassel. The Documenta 12 magazine project, curated by Georg Scholhammer, uh, editor of the Austrian magazine uh, Spring Green was a collective worldwide editorial project that under Documenta 12's umbrella linked together over 90 print and online periodicals as well as other media from over 50 different countries with the aim of transforming Documenta 12 into a site for reflection and visual contemplation. The Documenta 12 magazine project then, since its inaugural idea, presupposed that participating periodicals would, or even had to, accept certain conditions proposed by the institution, and in exchange they would obtain visibility and recognition in the global art arena, as it was represented by Documenta itself. And now, next slide. As the editor of the Philippine journal Panana pointed out with regards to Asian periodicals, quote, there's so little information trickling from this side of the planet to Europe that it seemed irresponsible to pass up the opportunity, unquote. But while normally such packs are mostly silent, even hidden, as they risk undermining the critical character of the publication, in this case it was rather unequivocal and something that both sides wanted to take advantage of. Next. On this matter, it's worth recalling philosopher Peter Osborne's argument that, quote, document acquired intellectual product to order, free of charge, in a way that legitimated its cutting edge pretensions, while the journals exchanged their largely ineffective independence for the oxygen of Documenta's publicity, and they supposed the cultural space in which to develop some collaborative projects, unquote. So once the involved periodicals had all agreed to these silent conditions, the question that arises is what went so badly wrong for a journal to define this curatorial and editorial endeavor, the big lie of Documenta 12, a sentiment that was, as a matter of fact, echoed by several other periodicals participating in the project and in various articles and debates that followed it. Next. Departing from these premises, I will attempt to analyze and rethink and the the role and importance of this unique collaborative institutional and periodical venture that despite all criticisms has been fundamental to showcase on the one side the art periodicals role in the art system and on the other how these peripheral periodicals have been challenging the center well first have been englobated and then challenging the center that in this case acts as documenta I will begin by briefly introducing the project how it came to be a part of documenta 12 and how it was structured Inevitably, the intricate relations between the magazine project, the institution, and the curatorial vision will be touched upon, although many aspects will remain unexplored. I will then move towards the analysis of the failure of the project, an aspect that cannot be forgotten when discussing mag magazine projects in the context of exhibitions and institutions at large. In terms of failure, I will focus on one aspect in particular, that is the transmutation of the online format into a printed one, a shift that denied the aerial, gridless, fluid and open network of periodicals that had to be established to favour a rigidly designed printed catalogue with the collection of what were considered by the curators of the show the most relevant articles and voices for the monumentalization of the institution. Documenta 12 was directed by curator Roger Bergel and art historian Ruth Nowak. The two curators devoted the exhibition to the theme of migration of forms, with which they intended to investigate the migration of aesthetic forms across temporal and cultural boundaries, culminating in the art of our postmodern world. Next. The overall program and research around the exhibition were structured on the basis of three late motifs. Three questions that, according to the curators, held the exhibition together. Is modernity our antiquity? What is bare life? And what is to be done? The first question asked whether and to what extent modernity still influences the present. 
the second, departing from philosophers Giorgio Agamben's 1996 concept of bare life, underscored the sheer vulnerability and complete exposure of human being. The third and last of the three leitmotifs moved the accent to the problem of discursivity, communication, art education, and the mediation of art. So while all three leitmotifs are central for the Documenta 12 magazine project, because all the invited periodicals had to produce and publish articles that were related to them, the latter may be even more important as it was impersonated by the project itself. By demonstrating the need for um, opening up and uh, constructing a debate on the exhibition in the global arena. Indeed, according to a press release published before a presentation event on the 26th of January 2006, so almost a year and a half before the opening of the show, the periodicals, quote, were a key organizational form that prepared the ground for the exhibition at a preliminary stage, unquote. Next slide. Thank you. Having already participated in a periodical network, such as that developed by the magazine Art Magnet in 2002-2003, and here, unfortunately, I only found this picture uh, between the, um, in, the, in, the, in the archival search as I did. Schulhammer, who was invited to be part of the team in 2004, decided to try such a venture again, this time, though, under the umbrella of an institution like Documenta, which allowed him to not only find the funding for the project, but to expand its reach further than any antecedent or following periodical project hosted by the institution. Indeed, as noticed by art scholar Gwen Allen, despite its universalizing aspiration and its showcasing the uneven power relationships that govern the exchange and distribution of information in today's art world, the project was pivotal in putting innumerable previously unknown publications and their proliferating publics, of course, under the spotlight of the Western art world. Next. Purposefully excluding a number of mainstream art magazines embedded in market dynamics like Art Forum or Freeze, all those that associate with art discourse that associate art with discourse about lifestyle, fashion, design, and so on, as well as academic journals, the project gather uh, together an extensive number of influential journals in the realms of art and culture, operating in discursive fields beyond the major art centers. Next. The project officially launched in 2006 with the online platform, a series of trans-regional trans meetings in Hong Kong, Singapore, Johannesburg, Bratislava, just to name a few, and three ontological issues of Documenta 12 journal. For the opening of Documenta, the project would also propose an exhibition of periodicals in the Documenta Halle and a further series of conversations between the periodicals that were titled Lunch Lectures that were held during the 100 days of the exhibition. According to a document with internal information of the per on the participating magazines, the online platform, aside from functioning as a shared space, an online home for the myriad of geographically dispersed, printed and online magazines, and an archive of the sort of journal of journals as it was defined by its editors, was intended to act as a content management system. It was based on an open source software in which the periodicals could work in what they called a decentralized manner, albeit, as you can see from this link and from the next slide, if we can move to the other one, they are always linked to the center that is documented, as I underlined here. So all, um, they all collectively edited the contents that were compiled on a local level from the regions of the periodicals, and then they were published in a range of different language, but they all converged within the uh, document itself. As David Cunningham and Stuart Martin put it, quote, the proposal of itself, of Documenta, as a stage for an exchange of local, self-organized projects became a way of sustaining its global significance as an organizational center in an increasingly decentered world, as is emphasized by the positioning of Documenta in the network, by a matter of fact. Um, so, if you look at these, at these two, two pictures, I'm sorry for the quality, uh, but they are actually much more similar to a centralized system than a, than a decentralized one, as it's shown in the next slide. There we go. So putting the, the production of knowledge in the hands of the magazines rather than in the curators and evidencing a seemingly more democratic structure through the network of periodicals was certainly a bold act by the, on the side of the curators because within a self-organized system, it is quite complicated to keep hold of the information that was published 
and to consider not only this was of the quality the exhibition was looking for, but also, and perhaps most importantly, that it wasn't counterproductive or critical for the exhibition's self-narration's purposes. The constellation of articles published around the world and converging towards Documenta 12 in the end, rather than allowing the self-organized and self-sustainable system to continue existing, became a crucial example of the tension between margins as represented by the outline magazines and the censor that is Documenta. As I argue, this tension is testified also by the passage, but well, most importantly not also, by the passage and transformation of the online space into three issues of the Documenta 12 magazine, a passage that denied those initial premises, defied the function of the network as a self-organized system to sustain the legitimization and historicization of the show, providing it with an expendable narrative and becoming one of the main facets of its failure. So if we can go to the next slide. These are all the, 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 the outputs that the project uh, developed. So, so the lunch lectures, the three issues, the exhibition, the online network, and the transregional meetings. And in the next slide, there's a picture of the uh, exhibition in the Documenta Halle. OK, so next uh, slide again. So, OK. The Documenta 12 journal was published in three issues that were devoted to the core themes of the exhibition. And based on the responses, to the three late motifs that I mentioned earlier. These were titled Correspondingly Modernity, Life, and Education. They were published with a quarter no, next slide, sorry. They were published with a quarterly periodicity in winter, spring, and summer 2007, with the last one coming out right before the opening of the show. The third issue was the immediate, immediate predecessor of Documenta 12 magazine reader, which collected the three issues in a single volume in an attempt to defy the seriality of the publication and to elevate the importance of these periodicals to that of a catalogue or other institutional publication. These issues republished 73 of the 300 over articles that came out in 2006. All of them by renowned writers and journals picked once again to um, sustain the legitimization of the show. The variety of the contributions, their critical engagement, as well as the peculiarity of the participating magazines was raised by the curators in favor of a flat and austerely designed magazine. The overall sober aesthetic of the Journal of Journals, characterized by a bold black title typed with a Helvetica-like font on a white and gray back background, already gives the user a premonition of the gravity of the contents within. If we can go to the next slide. The only color on the softbound cover is a red that recalls the first graphics used in Documenta's early iterations and highlights the issues number from one to three. Interestingly, Documenta 12's own logo is not used. Uh, calling it instead Documenta uh, magazine and showing a link to the institution rather than to the exhibition alone. Next slide. The colors on the cover return in the eternal pages, with the text are on lightweight uh, white pages. Uh, sorry, the colors on the cover return in the eternal pages, with the text are on lightweight white pages, while all iconographic apparatus is framed on the gray pages. Next slide. And next again. Okay. Overall, the design of the volume is permeated by the idea of eliminating differences in hierarchies in order to avoid privileging one magazine or another, an idea that is discredited by the very compilation of the three best of publications. In alignment with the cover colors, similar to the general catalog, the internal layout is also rather rigid, reminding a reader viewer of a catalog book or perhaps an academic journal with a grid that leaves side space for footnotes and additional information, enhancing the idea of a volume that should be studied rather than only read. Amongst the additional information that can be found on the side at the beginning of each text are other biographies and a sentence that is laid out with the dimensions of a postage stamp in which it is stated when and where the article was first published with references including issue and page number or links in the case of an online publication. Alongside the list of magazines presented at the beginning of the volume and at the end with the self-portraits that were basically short biographies, this is the only space in which the idea of the Journal of Journals is visible in the layout. As argued by Allen, the curator's attempt to, quote, 
synthesize the contemporary art world's proliferating publics and perspectives into a single ensemble, underwritten by the institutional space and authority of documenta, implicitly perpetuated myths of universalism." Unquote. The editors of the Documenta 12 magazine tried to hide any specificity and materiality of the other magazines participating in the project, to make it their own, to be seen in its aftermath as content producers themselves, rather than exploiters and devourers of content produced by others and elsewhere. But the incorporation of the disparate periodicals in a, to a single unified voice, that of Documenta, comes with another consideration, the periodicals that until that moment had existed in an external and marginal space connected yet detached from Documenta, which allowed them a sort of independence from the institution, were turned first into a time of the exhibition, occupying the whole time of its interval with the proliferations of articles about it. And then through the publication of the Journal of Journals into an actual space of the show, a part of its overall corpus. The in, they initially fed the curators with the right words to explain the show to the audience, an aspect that was stressed by Claire Bishop in an Art Forum article published in 2007, and then were edited into a legitimizing document that shows the knowledge produced within it and monumentalizes not the journals that participated, that were also excluded by the main, in the main, from the main catalog, but the exhibition as if Documenta's incorporation of critical discourse into its organization and structure had enabled the stronger forms of critical engagement to be marginalized, not outside, but within itself. To conclude, uh, I'd like to focus on this aspect of failure, one that, as I mentioned earlier, is intrinsic to this type of periodical venture typified by an intertwining and overlapping of magazine and institution reader and audience. While the Documenta 12 magazine project was successful in spreading the word around the exhibition through a disparate number of publics arriving from the participating journals, in using their words to express and build knowledge about the exhibition and in multiplying its temporality, in another way it was always destined to fail. In hoping that the militant and autonomous positions of the global periodicals invited would be contained and phased down during their collaboration. Indeed, it's true failure was taken for granted that the magazines and their publics would silently accept to be colonized, transformed into a tool of the exhibition, and be overthrown by the power relationships that govern the art system and the way art is mediated and made public. It still happened, of course. But in my view, in the project's aftermath, what seemed to gain importance were the values rooted in the many pre-existing magazines that participated and how they managed to reappropriate the contents they produced for the show, moving them outside of the space of the exhibition and challenging the center as documenta. Something that can hardly be said with more recent iterations of the show, such as Documenta 14. Uh, next slide. When the curator Adam Simzik took over for two years and four issues, the Athens-based magazine South as a State of Mind. This action confirmed a shift began with Documenta 12, that of a new conception and position of the art institution and its relation with the art periodical. This position is perhaps no longer of critical engagement, but is stuck in subservient dynamics that are, to borrow the term from Cunningham and Martin, fundamentally post-critical, incapable of nothing else than producing positive opinions about on the institution and in which the elements of, let's say, positive failure as the one that emerged with these voices from the Documenta 12 participating periodicals either no longer exist or is extremely feeble. Thank you.